how far are we? Well, I think we're actually done. We're ready for splash day. I mean, we got new throttle fittings in, seacocks are new, all the plumbing is new. We rebuilt the engine completely, including piston rings and everything. And we did all the brand work, so I think we're ready for splash day. I think something's missing though. What are you thinking? She's pretty ugly. Oh, it's rough. So you think maybe a paint job? Yeah. What about a dark blue? Well, I like it. Last time when we refitted Gypsy and Lake Winnipeg, we did green, right? Yeah. So how about this time dark blue? Hey, I got an idea. Imagine Oxford blue, white Mediterranean, white water line, and a ruby red anti-fouling underwater ship. Mm. Hard to imagine. Mm. I can help. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Oh my gosh! Now I can see it! Well, that looks, that looks really pretty. What do you guys think? I, I like it. I think that looks amazing. Me too. Well, alright then, let's get it done. <laughs> Come on, you know it makes you really understand how big your boat actually is when you have to use such a tiny scraper for it. It's like cleaning the bathroom with a toothbrush or something. <laughs> You're killing it. You did all of that, all of this. You got new throttle fittings in, and that's also done. So we are almost done with it, almost. With a vacuum cleaner, there's hardly any dust. Right? Well, one more thing, as you probably have figured by now, we're kind of rough cruiser style most often times, so we're not the uh, proper yacht man, you know, we I never had an education around boats, I never apprenticed as a boat builder or any of that. So I don't know too much about it, just YouTube University and uh, my own experience. If you guys know more about, you know, how far you want to go down or get this stuff off, and uh, please leave comments, you know, if you have uh, experience with it, having a boat in the water for, I don't know, maybe longer, like two or three years. For the waters we're in, the water is brackish here in the Baltic, so we have an opening to the North Sea, that's Google going for the Kattegat and Skagerrak, Skagerrak, excuse me. And uh, so that's where water is coming into the Baltic Sea essentially, and the rest is rivers that, you know, is fresh water essentially, that's why the further you head north east into the Baltic, it gets brackisher and brackisher, so it's more fresh water component to it. But um, I think if we have a decent pre-coat on, and then, you know, self-polishing, anti-fouling for about six months until the boat will be hauled out again. We should be in good shape. That should pre prevent osmosis. So it's, uh, and again, if you guys know better or have a uh, different experience, please um, leave a comment below. It's always appreciated. Ginormous pain. Technically, they say remove everything down to the barrier coat, but honestly, we'll use a contact product from International that you can, uh, it's called, I think, pre coat. And you can use that if you're not quite sure what, um, 
Antifouling was on there before, chemical-wise. You can use that as a bonding coat. That's why, in my mind, right now it's important to get the flaky stuff off, with the stuff that's really loose, as good as possible, however. And then uh, we'll apply the bonding coat, and then we just put uh, self-polishing anti-fouling over. I think we're using Cruiser 250 from uh, International. It's uh, kind of a better, okay, anti-fouling if you have your boat in salt water. We're not in the water all year round. It's only going to be afloat for probably six months. So I assume this is going to be plenty good enough. So, um, and hence, it's so much fun here. We'll uh, see that we get as much off as we can. And then at some point we want to go sailing. So you can go all freaking, you know, itsy bitsy, nitty nutty about it and hit every little particle here. But in my opinion, as long as something, a bonding coat has a solid area to stick to, we should be here in good shape. idea how big a 27 foot board is if you have to scrape it with the size of a, I don't know, what is that, spatula? <laughs> it's like, again, cleaning your bathroom with a toothbrush. <laughs> That's beautiful. You know, it really makes you appreciate every foot of board you have, you know, and feel very sorry for yourself while you're doing it. Actually, I was thinking now how much fun it would be to sail in 12 foot dinghies. You know, it might be fun too. It's perfectly fine. Nothing wrong about it, you know. That stuff is really cool. Gel coat by Yachticom, and uh, it's like a one component product. So you don't need a two component mix, like with epoxy or anything like that. And the way that works is you put it on uh, like a filler almost, and it fits the very, very fine little uh, grooves and uh, cracks and such. And the result is stunning. It's completely smooth. So you can sand it, you can paint over it, or you can just leave it like that. And I believe there's also a component that you can use to tint it a little bit into the coloration of your gel coat. But all this is too far gone, that's why we want to paint it. It has too many battle scars. So uh, here, quick uh, application. So I put on like toothpaste, just like that. Very simple. And then you use a, a white spatula. And you want to work it relatively quick because that stuff hardens really, really quick. And try to make it as smooth as you can, just with the applications like so. And then, you know, the roughness you send out after, pretty freaking stunning. So it's completely smooth. That's not a dent, there was a big old hole before. But then again, mind you, uh, to fill the hole we used thickened epoxy first. And this is just basically the super thin gel coat layer that goes on top. There you go, there you have it, nice product. Again, one component, you just apply it and it shrinks, like I said. So apply it a little thicker. And then use a rough pad and just sand over it until you have a smooth finish that should be completely hidden under the pre-coat. I'm thinking we will do two uh, applications of pre-coat. Yeah, and a few more to go like this guy here I have to sand down so it's actually not too bad. can go really at it. There you go. I'm doing it by hand because I'm in here and I don't want to make too much dust really. There are other boats in here so I'll have to do it by hand. That takes a bit longer but also gives you better control. Alright you guys, so we use a silicone remover because we have uh, remains of tape, of um, painter's tape that I used, like random one and there's some adhesive that is still sticking to the hull. So it's a no-go. If you paint over that, you basically ruin your work. So that's why we go with this and uh, see how that goes. So it's a rough sponge and silicone removal. Perfect. But here's the thing, when you spray, um, when you spray that uh, silicone remover here, it's pretty aggressive stuff, so make sure you wear your goggles when you spray. Goggles? Goggles. 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 Tomato, tomato, potato, potato. Also goggles. Tomato, tomato. Or your safety glasses. And then um, let it sit for a moment and it will dissolve any type of adhesive. 
that we had in here from that reflective uh, tape stripe that was in here, man, that stuff is not coming off easy. That is really pretty resilient stuff. And um, that silicone remover does it. So we tried everything from heat gun to scraping to um, acetone, um, what else? Rush cleaner, I mean, everything you can imagine, nothing worked really great, but the silicon remover is good stuff. So we are using the good old frock tape, because as far as I'm concerned, that is the only tape that I could find that is actually preventing any paint from slipping underneath the tape and ruin everything. If you remove this within three days, not being exposed to direct sunlight, there will be no adhesive sticking to the surface. So you will save yourself a lot of hustle and pain by saving a little bit more, but therefore getting that stuff done way, way quicker and easier. We're not sponsored by Proctate, by the way. I'm just saying that because I have learned it the hard way. I used regular painter's tape on here, left it on for a week, and I had to clean significantly the gel coat off from the still very sticky adhesive. And guess what? Regardless of the super sticky adhesive of this weird painter's tape that I used, cheap painter's tape, um, there was still, I used it for varnish and the varnish got underneath the tape so it didn't work at all. I ended up using a rag and just wiping everything off because I got too frustrated with it after a while. There will be a line of uh, good old Zika Flex sealing this off here eventually, but still I'm trying to get as close as possible to the wood and protect everything from not being painted that's not supposed to be painted. Always stir that stuff well. Okay, so the first coat dried off. It looks pretty decent. 
for the first application. There's very few little uh, spots where I have to send a little harder to uh, get her to where I want her to be, but all the little dings in the hull and everything is completely gone. That worked fantastic. That gel coat filler is absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, and then uh, I go ahead now and send it down with, I think, 320. Give it a little, uh, a little uh, roughing, and then we apply the second coat of pre-coat. Well, right, I got it all wiped down, so you see that I roughed it up a little bit because this will help with the chemical bond to create a mechanical bond also so that the next layer will stick very very well to the first layer so here we go second application now so i'm done with applying the pre-coat it'll turn out really nice super smooth finish and i just rolled it on with a foam roller i didn't even need to tip with a brush there's no bubbles in there nothing it looks really really sweet Oh yeah, one more thing, hence um, I purchased the blue-gray pre-coat. I think I'm not doing a 50-50 mix for the next coat with the actual top lock. Usually they say normally you would do a 50-50 mix next to have a deeper color saturation in your paint coat. But hence, in this is actually blue in already. I think we're good, honestly, because this is kind of a really bluish blue-gray. And um, I believe that should be fine. So I'm going uh, straight ahead with the first full coat of top lock. So quick coffee break. Um, I got it all set, roughed up. So 400 grit, wiped it all down. Now comes the first application of Oxford Blue. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking this would be probably to start with a rudder. Just in case, you know, if I miss something, I'm also don't know yet if I really need to uh, roll and tip or if I can just roll this new formula. It's an enhanced formula. It has apparently better flow capabilities, they claim. We'll see how well that works. And um, to give it a try, I start out with a rudder. All right, it's showtime, folks. That is the color we're going for. Beautiful Oxford blue. So I shook it well, stirred it well, and I have a foam brush ready to tip it off because this paint I see already has a few bubbles in it. And um, if it doesn't work so well with just rolling it, I'm ready to tip it off. Hopefully that will work fine. You can see the bubbles. I hope you can see that. There's a couple of them in there so yeah but it is really thick man this is different than what we have used about two years ago up at lake winnipeg when we painted gypsy or urban 25 that wasn't formulated like this let's see how it looks like With this again, same like with varnish, it seems to be like less is more, easier to control. Thin layers in several applications, instead of going overkill here, yeah, and then you end up with runners in your paint, and it doesn't look so good. And it's tough to get them out, so that's as good as I could get it. Let's see if I tip this off. Incredible, all that thing, all that little uh, sponge paintbrush, or what that here is, the little sponge bob I'm using, it makes the bubbles go away like super, super easy. So I'm trying to run it all the way down, if we don't see any, any um, contact mark, marks, or whatever you call it, when you see where you put the brush down, you know. So, well, that's good enough for now, I guess. We ain't got any runners on here. This should be pretty okay so far, as I can tell, anyways. Yeah. 
Okay, done. That's a rudder. professionally or don't let's say could probably but don't want to because I don't think it makes sense it's no other boat I want it to look pretty it's gonna be a cruising sailboat I want it to be functional and safe and I want it to look pretty and to do that on a budget you will have to do a lot of jobs yourself as you probably know and therefore if you do just that, um, roll on and tip off with a brush, it might not be 100% as perfect as, let's say, sprayed on, but you can still achieve a pretty satisfying finish, I think. So again, start tipping off on the area where you haven't painted. That seems to work better in terms of uh, hiding brush marks. I still have them every now and then. I think it comes from the roller where it puts the roller down. However, I'm totally blown away by how well that foam brush works. Two different sizes worked really good. I'll try that tomorrow again. Um, I throw those away and use new ones tomorrow. I bought a bigger pack of them and um, they work like a charm. I'm really amazed, especially because they are so pointy. Can really get in there. And this time I did it without any boundary marks. I think anyways. Let's have a look. I think the first coat looks really, really sweet. I'm very pleased with it. I think it's an overall good result. On this side you can see boundary marks in the very beginning where I started before I had that figured out that you don't want to place the brush into the paint area. So I'll work that out when I send it down with 400 grit and then comes the second application and hopefully this is going to be then the final coat. Okay, so <clears throat> today is the day. Uh, it's now about 48 hours later after the first uh, actual paint coat application and it turned out pretty okay. But there are a few areas that I need to send out like this the uh, boundary marks where I made the mistake in the beginning to put the brush into this area are obvious. So this has to go away. I'll send that down and um, up at the hull deck joint there are a few runners that is really nasty so I have to send them out. I have to use way less um, paint now on the second application to make sure that that won't happen again. But for the most part actually it looks good. It covered okay. There are very few areas where it didn't. Like for instance, here's one. I don't know if you can see that. There is a little brush mark where it's relatively thin. Same like here. So I'll carefully rough that up. Kind of a painful process I think anyways. Now it's so 
nice and shiny and to go over I'm using 400 grit to get a rougher surface again it, it is cured it's definitely touch dry and everything but it's still like it feels like rubber almost that's probably the best way I can describe it right now so um, that tells me it's not completely cured yet and that's exactly what I'm going for because then you not only have some mechanical um, bond so to speak to, to the scratch marks but also a chemical bond because the paint hasn't cured completely yet So again, once you sand it down, you can really see all the imperfections, like this guy here. See, now it's coming, it's becoming really visible here. So again, sagging, running, whatever you want to call it. Almost a runner coming down here. And again, if you apply this too thick and don't pay attention, you will enter. A world of pain. Right, because you have to send that all out, most likely by hand. I mean, you could use a machine also. And hand sanding is our favorite thing to do as boat enthusiasts, isn't it? Right? Um, yeah, you want to avoid that. Don't do that to yourself. Except from the get go, that this is going to be a lot of work. It's just the nature of it. I want to be frank with you. There is no shortcuts really. You have to roll up the sleeves and get her done. That's the only way to do it or hire it out if you want. But if you really are budget oriented, get the work done yourself, it will take a while. I know how that makes you feel though. I felt exactly the same way. Yeah, that's bad news, no shortcuts. Sorry guys. So another cool idea, I guess, would be now that I um, wiped everything down wet to get the last remains of any little speck off with a brand new white and fine brush. So just like that. Just see how I know I've never tried it before, so first time, always charm, but it seems to seems to work okay. Like I said, it's kind of sticky, weird like rubber. It has a rubber feel to it. And that's also what you what, what you send off, so it's kind of a not really loose dust, it kind of tends to stick to it. So we'll see how it goes. I wiped it off now with a towel and now I brush it off one more time and wipe one more time and hopefully I get it all cleaned off to a point where I can apply the final coat then. So it's the final coat, it's on, it looks good. I'm very pleased with the outcome. Again, it's not like sprayed on, but it looks smooth. It has a really nice gloss to it. And then at the very end, if you have some, uh, I don't know, um, brush stroke marks in there or something, what you can do, you polish it up afterwards when you're all done. So I'll uh, go ahead and start tomorrow with a waterline, and then I'll uh, put a golden pinstripe in this will be a decal uh, sticker basically and um, once that is all done i'll uh, polish over and then we would consider this job to be done so the pinstripes are done it's really nice those decals are awesome The waterline done, white pre-coat and then top lock Mediterranean white. And again one more time now that I'm painting the waterline, the final coat, um, I want to show you one more time here the technique for how to tip off. That's at least how I figured it works best. I don't know if you guys know better, please leave a comment if you do. And uh, well here goes. And again I'm using, I'm using a, a foam brush for tipping it off. I think you can you can use also a hairbrush, it doesn't matter. Um, 
but I had good success with the foam brushes, so it worked pretty well for me. So I roll it on, make sure I have a relatively even cover. So now that I have an area that I can manage, I use a foam brush and tip it off and I start in the dry area and then pull off into the wet area. Just like that. One time. Yeah. The result looks pretty decent. There are no brush marks or anything. And I guess there's a better way of doing it. I'm sure that some pros know a few tricks. If you do, please, um, again, share that with us. Always appreciate it. Um, but with this technique, I had pretty good success. So don't put the brush into the wet area. Start off in the dry area and then pull out into the wet. And that seems to work best, at least for me. And here it is one more time, guys. Frog tape. Again, not sponsored by it, but look at that. Pretty good, huh? Time now to put uh, the primer on and the anti fouling paint. Uh, I got everything topped off and taped off well with again frog tape and I put a, an old plastic bag over the prop. So the prepping work is again most important, I think. I got tops everywhere, so we should be in good shape. <clears throat> and I wiped everything down with a wet towel. Um, we'll use uh, Primacon by uh, International as a primer and barrier coat. This stuff is good if you are not quite sure what has been used before, so it creates kind of a contact bonding layer, and it's also a barrier. And then we keep going and put the anti-fouling on, that's a Cruiser 250. So I got two cans of each, that's two, 2.5 liters, so I got five liters each primer and then anti-fouling for the whole boat. Stir it well, I will use this little contraption here and screw dryer to pop the cans. PPE, gloves, and a really good respirator mask because this is nasty stuff. It, it fumes pretty intensely. So if you can do that outdoors or in a very, very well ventilated area. Oh yeah, one more thing. Because that stuff is not fine paint, I will use a fur roller this time. So you wanna get it on as much as possible rough. You don't need a fine foam roller for this. I hope that explains it. So you don't really need to be super accurate here, you just smear it on, just slap it on there, get it all done, cover it up, you see it's kind of a silverish-ish, like silver-like tone, and all that you do is you basically create this contact barrier coat here, and uh, yeah, it's just important to get plenty of that on, obviously again you don't want to have any runners, but be generous. Yeah, you definitely need some good PPE. That is some really, really strong stuff. So don't inhale it. It, ain't, it can't be good for you. Well, I'm done putting the first uh, Primal Con uh, coat on, and it turned out I only needed one can, actually a little less. So that would be 2.5 liters for a 27 footer with a pretty significant keel area. So I miscalculated that. I hope I can bring it back to the store and they will reimburse me for one can and then we'll see how it goes with the actual um, anti-fouling. Voila, there you have it. So 
I ended up uh, doing one coat of Primacon and two coats of Cruiser 250 anti crawling and uh, that covered really well so I think that's good for the next year or two so we'll see how it goes we hope to see you next time on sailing good old boats new episodes every Wednesday so see you next Wednesday